Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about AWS IAM. IAM stands for Identity and Access Management and it's a service that helps you to uh, securely control access to your AWS services and resources. Before we uh, try to understand the definition of IAM and what exactly it is, let's try to uh, see the use case for IAM and what exactly it solves. Okay, so uh, let's imagine you created an AWS account. Okay, and uh, so after you like, I mean, you would have created this using an uh, email ID and password. Okay, so uh, this would be your root user credentials, uh, credentials, the email and the password that you used while creating your AWS account. Okay, so of course you can use these credentials to log into your AWS account and perform uh, any actions that you want in AWS. Okay, so uh, this root user has all the uh, you know permissions to all the resources and services in your AWS account, and there is no restrictions uh, on this user. Okay, but uh, this is not like I mean. Uh, advisable or safe to use a root user for all your day-to-day uh, -day activities like you know performing whatever development or whatever you uh, want to do on your AWS account okay root user should uh, only be used uh, for like I mean specific use cases like first time when you're logging in you can use a root user and create other users okay so uh, that is about the root user so it is not advisable to use a root user for all your day-to-day -day activities so what do we do for that so uh, let's imagine you have one developer okay so you want this developer uh, to access your aws account and perform some actions like uh, you know you want uh, them to create a lambda function and uh, you know download and upload files uh, from aws s3 okay sorry this should have been s3 okay so uh, you want to give uh, the access to this developer only uh, for these particular resources. You should be able to create the Lambda and upload and download the files to AWS S3. And you don't want this developer to be able to access to like any other resources or services. Okay, so how do you do that? So you can uh, create or to do like, I mean, solve this problem, you can create uh, what is called an IAM user for this uh, developer named John and uh, uh, grant him access to only Lambda and S3. And uh, so this uh, access part where you define what uh, access uh, that John has is called an IAM policy. So we will uh, discuss about all these core concepts uh, in the next slide. Okay. So uh, so like I hope you understood the use case or requirement for uh, IAM service. So this is a service which lets you to securely manage and uh, you know. Uh, control accesses uh, to other users and roles. Okay. So uh, there are four core IAM co uh, concepts. So one is users, what we discussed now, and there is user groups, roles, and policy. So these are the four uh, important concepts in AWS IAM, and we will be discussing about each one of these concepts in depth. Okay. So first, let's talk about IAM user. Okay. So user uh, actually represents a person or an application that uses its credentials to make uh, requests. So in uh, our previous use case, like I mean, a user was uh, John, who is a developer and had uh, access to Lambda and S3. So similarly, like, I mean, uh, okay, so uh, you can create an IAM user for any user that you want to give access to. And uh, so this user will have long term credentials like a login, uh, email ID or password. Okay, so that is an IAM uh, you can create. And there is another type of user which we call as uh, federated user. So federated user is not created inside IAM. So oh, basically you can have like uh, external directory like uh, you know uh, Azure uh, Microsoft Active Directory or whatever like the existing uh, your authentication directory. So you can link that with your AWS account. So uh, people can log into this uh, AWS account using their credentials like I mean from Microsoft uh, Active Directory credentials or whatever. Uh, so this is called as federated access and these users will have only temporary credentials. So. Uh, that is the difference between an IAM user and federated user. So we will discuss uh, more on this uh, in our like upcoming videos. Okay. So this is uh, the concept of IAM user. So the next thing is user groups. So uh, let's imagine like, I mean, you have uh, three developers in your team, right? So when you are creating a user for each developer, you have to like essentially give the same access to each developer, let's imagine. So you cannot like keep redefining that access uh, each time, right? So what you do is you create a user group called as developers and define the access uh, that these developers are going to have. And then you can create a user and add this user to this developers group. So, uh, so that all these developers will have uh, same access and it will be easier to like come I and add any privileges or remove any privileges for these users uh, uh, with the help of this user group. 
So uh, that is the concept of this user group. So you can have uh, various user groups like testers, DevOps, and you can add, add any number of uh, users to these groups. So uh, that is the concept of IAM user groups. And uh, the next important uh, uh, concept is IAM rule. So IAM rule is uh, kind of a similar to IAM user. It has like a permissions and policies attached to it, but uh, it does not have long-term credentials. And uh, also it is not associated to a particular user. So there is a role with particular permissions and uh, policies. So anyone uh, who wants to use that role can assume that role and perform actions through that role. Okay, so uh, I think I know it might be a little bit confusing uh, about the same role. So we will discuss more on this in our hands on videos. So you will understand it uh, better. So the next uh, core concept of IAM is IAM policy. This is very important one because this is where we define all the permissions and accesses uh, that we want to give using a JSON doc. It's basically, uh, I mean, it's usually a JSON document, which uh, is like, it looks like this. Uh, we will create more policies in our uh, upcoming videos, but uh, I just wanted to give you an idea of how um, policy looks like. So you can have like a statement ID and then effect allow and what are the actions that uh, it has permissions to and on what resources does this uh, have this permissions on. So you define this policy uh, and create the policy and then this policy can be attached to an IAM role or an IAM user. Okay, and uh, even in policies, there are two types of policies, which is one is AWS managed and uh, the other one is customer managed. AWS managed policies are like the standard policies that uh, would be required in like, I mean, building applications or whatever. Like uh, these policies are created uh, by AWS. You can use those policies and attach to your IAM roles or users. And then uh, there are customer managed policies. You can define uh, your own policy, like custom policy, and then attach that policy to role or user. Okay. So uh, this is the concept of IAM uh, policy. And I hope you understood this uh, four con core concepts of IAM, which is users, user groups, roles, and policies. Okay. So once you have like a strong understanding of these concepts of IAM, you will be uh, in a better position to like, I mean, work with IAM and uh, create stuff using IAM okay so uh, that's about the theory part uh, now let's actually try to understand in practical uh, how IAM works and how to create uh, stuff like users roles policies etc okay so uh, let's log into the AWS management console and uh, to work with IAM okay so I'm going to click on the sign into the console so it's going to take you to this page where it's going to ask you whether you want to sign in as a root user or IAM user. Like we discussed, root user is the one, the credentials that you use to uh, create while, I mean, used to create your AWS account, that's account owner, okay? And uh, IAM user is a user with a specific set of permissions like we discussed, okay? So uh, for this, like, I mean, let's try to log in as a root user and then we will also see how to log in as an IAM user as well, okay? Uh, I'm going to put in the credentials uh, that I used while I was creating my AWS account. So uh, once you enter your credentials, uh, it will log you into the console. So now this user has uh, unrestricted access to this AWS account. I can create anything, I can delete anything, I can interact with any AWS services, okay? So, uh, but this is not safe. Uh, like, I mean, you should not share your root user credentials with any other people. So if you want other people to access your AWS account, you create an IAM user for them with only the permissions that they would need and uh, share those cred uh, credentials of that IAM user with them so that they can use them to log in and perform those actions. Okay, so uh, since I'm logged in as a root user, uh, let me uh, try to create an IAM user for one of the uh, like users. Uh, I'm going to click on IAM. It's going to take us to uh, IAM console here and click on users here and click on create user here. Okay, so let's create a user named John. Okay, and uh, it's going, it's asking whether you want to provide management console access to this user. If you don't check this one, it, this user will have only programmatic access. That is, uh, he will be able to interact with AWS services uh, only using uh, like commands, CLI commands or uh, like uh, Python APIs or whatever. Okay, so we want to give this user uh, management console. Uh, so let's select this one. And the next thing whether it is asking is whether you are providing console access to a person. So the user type, uh, like we discussed, can be an IAM user or identities, like I mean, federated user. So you can uh, uh, 
uh, bring in like uh, uh, connect your Microsoft Active Directory or whatever identity provider that you have to this IAM and uh, add the user. So for now, let's create an IAM user. Okay, I want to create an IAM user and then whether it's going to ask whether you want to uh, uh, give a custom password or auto generated password. Let's uh, select auto generated password itself and it's asking whether you must create a new password at next sign in. So I'm going to uncheck this for now. Okay, so let's click on create user. So uh, the next thing is what are the permissions that this user should have? So you have options like uh, do you want to add this user to an existing group? So if you add uh, to that group the user will have the same permissions as that uh, group this is actually uh, the recommended practice so that you can uh, you know uh, manage the accesses better okay and you can also copy the permissions like coming I mean, from other groups or attach policies or you can attach the policies directly so let me select this for now and once you select that you will have all the list of policies that you uh, have here so uh, like we discussed there are two types of uh, policies one is aws managed the other one is uh, customer managed you uh, like i mean if uh, none of these policies suit your use case you can create your own uh, iam policy and attach it to this user so uh, for now like i mean uh, i'm going to give this user full access to s3 so let's search for s3 and if you search uh, there is this uh, access amazon full s3 full access so if you expand that you can see that action is s3 star and uh, the resource is star so what this means is this uh, policy if attached to a user that user will have all the permissions on s3 uh, like on all s3 resources okay i'm going to select this one and click on next and then click on create user okay so now this user is created so you can sign in as this user uh, like uh, using this console sign in url so let's uh, do that let me copy this and open a new incognito window paste it there Okay, so now it is asking for I am username and password. So we will uh, uh, put in those information that we obtained from the previous step. So I'm going to copy this password and paste it over there. All right, uh, let's click on sign in. And now it will like, we have signed in as an I am user like John. Okay, so now let's see if this user can access Lambda since we had given only S3 permissions to this user. So let me open Lambda service. Yep, so if you see here, it throws an error saying that this user doesn't have permissions for uh, Lambda. Okay, let's go to S3 and see if we can access S3. Okay, yeah, so if you see, the user can see the buckets uh, that are there here. And you can, you can see the files, you can download or upload the files to this buckets since we have given full S3 access to this user. Okay, so uh, that is how uh, IAM user works. So you can restrict the set of permissions that you want to give to a particular user. So you can of course like uh, do a lot of more stuff. Uh, like I mean, you can practice uh, creating IAM user groups and adding users to that group and uh, you know, creating your own IAM policies and stuff like that. Uh, you can play around uh, with all those things. So, but this video was to just to uh, give you a basic understanding of what IAM is and how it works and how to get started uh, with using the IAM. I hope you found this video helpful. In the next videos, I'm going to be discussing more in depth on the concepts like I mean, user groups and uh, all those things. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.